Um, so hi everyone. Uh, this is the core conversation room, and this is learning to let go, uh, contrib burnout. Uh, I'm Dave, um, and yeah, this is going to be an interesting session for me. So if you want to uh, tweet me, there's my tweet handle uh, or Twitter handle, uh, just Dave Reed. I'm on Drupal.org as Dave Reed. Um, and yeah, this is, this is quite a little bit different for me. Um, I do want this to be more of a conversation than a, a presentation, because um, I want to work through some ideas. Because really, like, I've been telling people about this session, like, I want to picture this session as, like, you're all my therapists. I'm going to sit up here on the couch, like, I'm going to lie down, and, and we're going to work through some problems. Uh, we may not solve any problems, and, like, I think I put in the session description, like, I don't have answers for some of this stuff. So maybe we can figure them out together. Uh, so yeah, I'm Dave. I write modules. Um, just a little backstory on me. I've been in the Drupal community for about 10 years, uh, which seems like a lot. Like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm part of the old guard now, which is really weird. Um, and I work at Lullabot, which is also celebrating its 10th anniversary. That's kind of fun. Um, and this is also my 10th DrupalCon. So if you like numbers, that's a fun coincidence. Um, I'm excited to be here and like see everyone. And I had a really great day yesterday. And oh my god, I love the food here. Um, that's like I'm excited about that. Um, and one of the reasons that I enjoyed coming to work to Lullabot um, among a lot of other things, um, some really great coworkers, is their core values. Um, they have them defined on the website. Um, and this one in particular uh, like really resonates with me right now, um, and especially throughout the last couple of years. Um, and it's be human. Um, and if you can't read that, it's we love our red robot. Though we may do technical digital work, we know that it's the human connections that bring our work to life. We value our humanity, we talk in simple terms like humans, conduct our business like humans, and accept the humanness of those around us. Uh, we celebrate failure as an opportunity for growth. We admit mistakes and learn from them. And we strive to be honest, humane, friendly, caring, and humble. Trust emotion, trust intuition. And like, I think that's a good, like, that kind of value is pretty strongly throughout the Drupal community too, and I have been trying to live by this more. And specifically, like, failure. Like, I think the last couple of years of my life have been kind of a failure. And that's okay, um, but I want to explain why. Because I write modules, and then I hoard them, um, which is really what happens. Um, I mean, they just stick with me. They stick around forever. I don't really know how to get rid of them, and sometimes I don't really want to get rid of them. Um, it's a personal issue I'm facing. Um, and just like cats, because I have to include a slide of cats, because um, I hoard those, but I only have three. Um, so with the newest one, the calico on the cat on the left, um, which I wish I could also get rid of, because um, like <laughs> the most kitten destructive behavior that we've ever seen. And like the other two cats look like awesome cats in comparison. Um, yeah, I wish I could give them away, but they're, they're family. Um, but does anyone have a guess to the number of modules I currently maintain? 175. 175, anyone else? 500. What in the back? 500. 500, any other guesses? 50, 200, 19, 90? It is 134. So you want a module. You were, you were close. And I even wrote the module to keep track of the number of modules that I wrote. You, you get a module too, then. <laughs> I have a stack here. <laughs> I can just throw them out. Um, and I even put a, like a little counter, like you know, the factory. Like it's been two days since our last accident. So it's like, yeah, it's been two months since Dave wrote a module. 
Um, and I have to admit something. Uh, I wrote a new module this morning, technically. <laughs> so it's now 135. And you win another module for being close, too. So yeah, 135. That's a lot. That is quite a lot. And so I, I've been trying to, as a part of preparing for this session, like go back and understand why I'm doing this, why it's gotten to this point. Like, why, why, do you, why am I hoarding this? Why, why is this a problem? And I mean, there's some obvious reasons, like writing modules. Like, it's the first way I got involved in Drupal.org. My first module was the feed burner module. I wrote it. No one had written the feed burner, like how to integrate feed burner with Drupal. And I wrote it back in 2009. And it feels good to contribute back. I really, really, really get a lot of enjoyment from contributing back. And like, I don't know, it's just, it's a part of everything of how I solve problems now. Like, every client problem I encounter or every like, you know, user story or epic that I'm working on, I'm always like, how could I solve this with a module? And then like, maybe like a little client glue around it. Like, how can I get this, in, like how can I make this reusable for people? And I think that's a good thing. But then it's like when I'm always doing that and then they build up, build up, up, it's like, it gets a lot. And I mean, it also, I mean, I have to, I have to admit, like it's a little bit vain of me to say, but like there's the prestige and there's the respect. Like if you're working, um, Module maintainer of Path Auto, like everyone uses it. Everyone wants to thank you for it, um, and it happens all the time. And like, I don't know. I feel good about that too. Like, it's it's not a bad feeling um, until I realize how bad the situation has got. Uh, so yeah, and it results in obviously me being spread too thin. Um, so, I mean, in addition to all the modules, like, I maintain two core subsystems right now. I work on the token API and the telephone module. And I should really say work, because I don't really do it anymore, because I don't have time to dedicate to it. Um, I'm a member of the Drupal security team, and I invest time in that. I'm a member of, I'm supposed to be a member who can approve project applications. And Jeremy, you're gonna laugh at that, yeah, because I've like not approved a project application in like a year. Like, I don't think I've been active in that issue, and I probably should just resign that position. Like, I need to give it up. Um, I'm a big part of, like, the media initiative. Dries talked about in his keynote, you know, he wants to make a media initiative, but we, we already have kind of a team that's already been working on this uh, for, like, five years. Um, and we've been doing all the D8 work and trying to figure out the solutions forward for that. And, you know, that's a big part, too. Like, I mean... It's like I just got sucked back in yesterday when he did his keynote and he announces the media initiative. And I was like, ah, oh. like everyone around me was like, knew that my reaction was like, damn it. Because <laughs> I knew like I've been involved in this for so long. I either need to like cut it told cold turkey or I need to figure out a way to offload my knowledge to someone or I just need to make it a last hurrah and keep going through it. And like, to me, the option to quit is not an option for me. It, I, it's, it's just not one that I, I realize. Uh, I'm also a local group organizer. Like I, I organize our meetups, and I have work, too, that's 40 hours a week. And I have a family, I have a wife, and I have two kids that are really small. And like I want to, like, am I sacrificing being a dad and being a husband for this, um, in addition to all the modules? Um, and it ends up feeling like I'm just backed up in a corner, like all the time, and I, I will get very, very stressed out, and I hide it really well from people. Um, it's, it's paralyzing at some times, uh, and, I, and I have to face it, and I have to deal with it. So, that's kind of my backstory. If I haven't like completely, you're like, oh yeah, I'll take this case if you're the psychologist, because you're like, this is going to be some great billing hours. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to go through like some pain points for like 
as a module maintainer, like how do I feel pain when I'm when I'm working on modules or working on Drupal.org? And I would love if you you know had also a pain point that you encountered um, to step up to the mic and help me out. Um, I kind of listen to things like GitHub is becoming more and more popular with Drupal modules. And I really find as someone who works primarily on Drupal.org, it fractures a lot of discussions. And like, if it doesn't exist on Drupal.org, like, I don't feel like it should exist. And I, I have a tough time with that. Like, we're using GitHub for all the Drupal media stuff in, in D8, and it gets really confusing at times. Because like, I want to adhere to making sure I'm attributing all the commits properly. And it's really easy to do that with Drupal.org, but it takes a little bit more work on GitHub. And like, and then if I'm not attributing things correctly to the right people or that kind of stuff, like I feel bad that I'm not doing that properly. Um, you know, issue queues. They're a pain point. <laughs> if, if modules didn't have bugs and we didn't have users, it'd be a lot easier. But that's not the reality. Um, <laughs> You know, support requests and like the issues that come in every week. This module doesn't work or this thing doesn't work and like no more details about it. And like, you know, we don't have good issue templates for new, for people that are newer to Drupal.org filing bugs, like the information that it would be nice to have from them or try and extract from them, uh, we're not getting. Um, I mean, I've, I've had this issue like, I would love to give people co-maintainership access to modules. Um, and I'm trying to loosen that up, obviously, with this session. Um, like, someone will come by in the path auto issue queue and be like, I want to help maintain. But like, I will search, because you can search by a user and see how many issues they've touched or like replied to or posted on in the issue queue. And I'll search for their username, and it'll be like, the one issue where they asked to be a co-maintainer was the one issue they were involved. And I nice, I try very hard to like, you know, encourage that person to be a, a contributor. And like, hey, I, I would love your help. You know, this, this always needs help. You know, please get involved in the issue queue. I, I've got these patches that need review. You know, you, there's these issues that could use t someone to write, help write tests. You know, um, I could just help someone that, you know, goes through the issue queue and helps triage stuff. Like, that's all helpful. And then, like, when someone is, helping quite a lot, I will be like, you know what, you've been a super big help, I'm gonna add you to the module. Like, I have no problem doing that. Um, on the other hand, is it, am I being too restrictive to those people? Like, should I just be giving access away willy-nilly? Um, or like, but I don't feel like I should do that with some of the other modules. Like, I shouldn't do that with Path Auto, because, you know, a lot of people rely on that module, and it's, it has to have some standards with it. Um, it's so like, where's that balance for me? Um, and like, I don't know, like, I used to think that, you know, longer ago, the, the places that new modules fit in, like, you could, you could write a module for stuff because it didn't exist yet. And I think that is slowly, slowly lowering. It's like, we need to get people involved more in current modules. Um, and this kind of ties into project applications, like, I, I know that a lot of them end up like, hey, could you help this module instead somehow? And like getting people involved in that, like, is that a way that we can help reduce this load somehow or this pain? Um, and frankly, I find it a lot easier to remove yourself as a core maintainer of stuff um, than a contrib maintainer. Because I, I feel very strongly that core, like if, if I were to go say, like I can't be the token maintainer in core anymore, because um, I have literally done this. I've said, I can't maintain the path module anymore. And I filed an issue with a patch to remove myself from maintainers.txt. And a couple of people are like, we're sorry to see you go. And I was, I was like, I was just honest. I was like, I don't have time for this. Um, and it was just easy and done. And I know that two months down the road, someone is going to pick that up in core. Um, because it's core. It's so very important that someone there's a maintainer for every section of core that's active and, and responsible. And I feel like that's not the same in contrib. Like, if I were to just drop off on some modules, which I have done, like, is someone gonna pick up this work? Is it just gonna fade? Is that okay or not? I, I struggle with that a lot. Um, 
And I, I like highlighting this. If you've ever seen this on Drupal.org project pages, we, we added these nice stats you know, for our end users. Um, but this is super stressful as a maintainer, because it's like, your response rate to issues is 21 hours. Like, that does not give off a very good impression, and it's like requiring my effort to constantly be in the issue queue to make this stat look good. And like, it's, that's a pressure on me there. And like, 33% response rate, that's pretty crappy. But like, those are all, that's, there's a lot of factors in there. Um, I think this is the media module too, by the way. I think. And one of my biggest fears is like self-identity. Um, what if I'm not the module guy anymore? Because like I've self-identified and identified in the community with that. Like that's a, I feel like that's a part of me. And what happens when I, when I lose that part? I, I very much struggle with that, you know. Will I, if I'm no longer the module guy and active in all these modules, will I want to work on Drupal anymore? I don't know. Um, and it's scary because it's like all I know right now. Like I'm fully invested in Drupal um, and I don't feel like I can leave. Like I don't, I want to be working with Drupal. That's what I love doing. But it's scary to imagine that not being a part of my life. And this isn't really a self-enforced identity like there was even, um, Greg Knanison made this website that you could make wagers on things. Um, and this was back in 2012, uh, Greg Dunlap, one of my now coworkers, made, it, made a question, how many modules will Dave Reed have by the end of the year? Uh, it's like this is, I mean, this is not self-enforced too, but it's, it's part of who I am. How do I, how do I lose it? So uh, did anyone have any other, like, uh, module maintainer pain points that they have. Uh, yeah. Same pain points at 40 and 50, yeah. Yeah, ignoring the issue queue. That's that's one thing I do. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I know. It's like it's it's a solution. It's a solution that comes to the detriment of the end users um, of the. Yeah, I, I would empathize with that one, that it's hard to like document why the things are the way they are um, at times. Like, I, I struggle with that. Like, how do I document that for all these modules? And like, if I could do that, I feel like I could let someone have the keys to all this stuff um, and take over the larger stuff. Um, and it's something that I have very much experienced actually like in this porting process from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. There have been some modules that like kind of went off the rail in, in, in this one feature, and like I and I'm trying to not be involved, and then I see like it happen, and I'm like, hey, you did realize this is intentionally this way because of this, and like they didn't know that at all, and it's it's hard to document that in code, and like I, I probably need to document that like on the handbook pages somehow, but like that takes a lot of effort and time, um, yeah. Um, so I, yes. Yeah, so the patch-based workflow, ironically, I love <laughs> because I'm just used to it. Um, but for like people that want to be involved and help contribute to modules, that's probably a pain point for them. Like that's a reason why they're we're lacking a lot of help with modules too. Yeah, that's fair. 
Yes. Got it. So for the recording, um, to kind of help relay, your issue is kind of the reverse. Like, it'd be easier if people helped provide pull requests for stuff um, rather than patches. And that's completely valid, I think. It's just, you know, the converse. Um, you had, yes? Yeah, having the separate project page, readme.txt or markdown, all separate, like that works really nice on GitHub. Yeah. yeah, I like how that works. And I know that there's an issue to actually have that happen on Drupal.org. It just needs uh, an infrastructure champion to have that have that done. Yeah, that would that would be nice. And I think, like, if I'm thinking about it too, it'd be nice if we like have an architecture dot markdown or something like that. Like, if, if I started doing that with modules, like just trying to put down architecture documentation in a file um, in the project that might help with some stuff. Um, yes? Yeah, so the views issue squad, um, that, that worked out really well for them because like it was tightly focused, um, they had an active group um, and multiple people in the group and it was, you know, the most important module. Like it was, it was heavily visible. Like we've, we've tried to replicate the same thing with like the media module. We used to have a media module issues queue squad that would have had the same goals of like helping helping incoming bug reports and helping maybe help solve those before it needed to be brought to like my or some one of the other maintainers you know attention um, and the problem was that just it fell off people didn't it I mean I can't blame people for this because it's like life takes them in another direction or they lose interest or like it just falls off and like it just it didn't last very long um, and like if I tried to do that for all of the modules, it'd be a lot of work to organize that all. Like it would, you know, maybe Drupal.org could have like something where someone could sign up to be an issue queue maintainer rather than it being something the maintainer grants to you, which is the current process. Um, so maybe that's something that like, hey, I want to subscribe to issues and like every support request and bug report gets sent to you and not the other stuff or something like. <laughs> and there actually is, you know, there are people that are helping do that. One of them is in the room, is Wampy in the front. He's one of my coworkers, and he's been um, awesome helping triage a lot of the D8 porting issues. Like, yeah, and, and it, it does happen, so thank you, Wampy. Um, yes? I am Paul McKibben, and I have one of your pain points. Yes. <laughs> Would you like a module? Would that help? Yeah. 
so yeah. I have uh, a hard time finding time for it. I want to ask you about what you are doing right. How do you find time for contrib? <laughs> How do I find time for contrib? That is an excellent question. Moving on. Um, <laughs> I, I can kind of cover, you know, what, what, how I'm kind of handling things now, which kind of fits into with that. Um, I compartmentalize things a lot now with, with modules. Um, so kind of like with, what was said earlier with, like, ignoring issue queues, I will basically, like, say, okay, this week I'm going to look at Path Auto, and I ignore everything else. Um, and that kind of works, but it's not really sustainable, like... Because if I use a, a spend a week on a module, I'm going to be spending, you know, I'm not going to get back to Path Auto for, you know, three years. Yeah. Um, that's not very sustainable at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I try, and, I try and focus more of the compartmentalization on the major modules. So, like, I'll do Media one week, Path Auto one week, Redirect one week, and cycle through those a bit. And the smaller modules, it's like, if an issue queue pops up that piques my interest, or if like someone provides a patch that I can easily review, like I'll maybe go check that out, but I kind of tend to ignore it. Um, and, and that's, I, I think I only spend less than an hour, like maybe 30 minutes to an hour a day then, if at all, because um, sometimes it's just not any time in the day that I spend on it. Um, I'm actually trying therapy this year. Um, like to help some of the personal issues, and I would recommend it. Um, it's it's tough, but like talking about it, like this is a form of therapy for me. Like talking about these issues aloud, in front of peers and strangers and TripleCon people that can then tweet me afterwards. It's kind of scary, um, but I'm trying it, um, and I think it's helping a little bit. It's helping me at least accept things, um, accept the problems, and brainstorm a little bit on how I can try and let things go. Um, I've been focusing a lot more on time away from the computer. I mean, this doesn't, this directly conflicts with contrib time, um, but like and those other pressures, like I have really been enjoying taking walks with my family um, and, you know, related also exercising a little bit more. Like um, that's, that's been a goal of mine for this year um, to do more of that. And uh, something I've also been doing is like a lot more very, very strictly tracking to-dos um, in a to-do list system. So I use GQs. It's tied in with Google. Um, and I can divide things into different queues and reorder them, and it's kind of nice. Um, but like literally everything that comes in, I will add a to-do. And I think it's probably like close to the getting things done method, probably. Um, and so like I'll take a look in the morning and like, what are my work to do's? What are my personal to do's that I want to get done? And I, if I can check two things off for personal and three things off for work today, I feel good. Um, and I'm not feeling like I'm spinning everywhere and trying to get everything done. Um, and that's gotten me a lot more satisfaction um, in my own personal, like, at the end of the day, I can like, okay, I feel like I'm done at five and I know I've, I've literally see the things I've checked off and like, I don't know, this may be simple for everyone, but it was like a revelation for me to like really stick with this. Um, yeah. Um, any other ideas for like things, things that you've found in your like experience, like how, how to de-stress or how do you handle balancing these things? Ben? Away from keyboard time. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yes. I had a fun experience with the all module because I I was maintaining Twitter and I found an issue with all out and my Twitter was completely fed up with the module and said, Oh yeah, and I gave you commit access. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first module which I started maintaining and suddenly I had this other module which sixty thousand sites were using it by that time. And that's, that's 
has, has been for years. Like, like I never found an issue on the module myself. But like, <laughs> once in a while, I go there, oh, five more. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. So the community there helps. And they maintain the module. I, I just do the final check and get the thing in. But I don't work on the module. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think I, I empathize with that a lot. Like, I, I definitely have had situations where, like, if I can rely on people, other people to get issues to reviewed and tested, that is awesome. Like, that's my ideal. Like, if I could have that happen in everything, that would be great. Um, but it doesn't happen a lot for me, surprisingly. Um, it does happen more in the popular ones, um, but like, I don't know. It doesn't happen as often as I think it does. So, or how much? Maybe how much I wish it does. I don't know. But yeah, if that happened more often, and I think you're talking about XML sitemap too. So, yeah, we'll we'll commit those. So you asked how how do you de-stress, and I found for me the the easiest thing was I put it this way: I stopped going to work, or I rather, I stopped rushing to work. So every morning was a wake up, get the kids can. Get in the car, go, 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 go. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I have not been on time to work in about two and a half years, but I have been twice as productive as a result because I'm not showing up stressed. How do I do? I need to do this. And just taking more of a South American approach to time made all the difference. Okay. The South American approach to time. Interesting. Yeah, I I like that. If I didn't have yeah, scrums in the morning, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that road rage in Omaha when I'm driving to my own house. Yeah, I work from home. Yeah, that that may clarify, but I. I can also, I feel a little bit stressed just getting the family ready to go in the morning. Like, I feel like I experienced the same thing. And it's like, the mornings where, like, I feel very pressured that I have to get to work on time, and I'm like, the kids are screaming, and I know that Jenny is trying to help get the kids out of the house. Like, oh my god, that just starts my day off horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Yeah, I definitely found, um, from my own personal experience, that we moved into our house like two years, two or three years ago, and I had thought, oh, this, this room on the main floor, it's nice and centrally located, it's where the router will go, so naturally that's where I should put the office. Um, and I found with having small kids, having the room on the main floor does not work as well because uh, they respect boundaries a lot less. And so I eventually moved the office downstairs into a room and I was able to, f it helped a lot on the focus level for that. So I can definitely, yeah, definitely recommend that. Yes? Well, yeah, I'm going to let it know when I work from home, we have to make it, uh, making sure you leave the house uh, that I would realize that I would get to points where I hadn't gone out in three days. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, making sure that you leave the house. I do the grocery shopping in our house because it's like, that's my opportunity to go drive somewhere and do something and like feel productive for my family. Like, and I enjoy that strangely, so. Yeah. Yeah, trying to keep a regular schedule, I found is very challenging because my kids don't wake up at the same time every day, <laughs> and I tend to sleep until they're awake. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll. Can can you teach them to wake up at the same time? Yeah, I know. I feel like it's a phase thing with small kids. Like I'm in that kind of rough period as a parent too, and like. I just kind of need to accept that it, uh, like, that it's rough right now, and that it, it it hopefully will get better. Everyone tells me it gets better. Yeah, there's some thumbs up. Okay, all right. <sighs> yeah, I mean that that adds to that stress. Small kids, they're fun. Um, so, you know, what are areas that Drupal.org? I kind of touched the personal aspect. What are areas that Drupal.org could help reduce that stress and pain for maintainers? Um, so some ideas I, I had, like, I feel like Core has a good mentoring structure, but like, I would love to have con, like contrib mentoring be something. But again, it takes time to do that. Like, how can we, how can we better mentor contrib? Oh, there are. Oh, Tim Plunkett. Okay, I'll talk to Tim about that then. I'll... Okay, all right, yes. I don't understand what, why on every screen, whenever we're preparing a new version of a new release of Drupal, um, we incorporate so many contributing to core and we get new people who have never contributed and we put them in front of a core issue. Yeah. The other aspect of it is just the overwhelming aspect. Coming to a con in its own is overwhelming. We think the core issue is overwhelming. Okay, which of the 20,000 do you want to contribute to? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure I would want to put a new person in front of media's issue queue at all. Like, that's a scary place right now. Yeah, but there could be modules that could be done. Right? You could say, okay, yes. these, these modules are kind of looking for help and they're not scary. Yeah, if it was like prearranged, like if we had like 
module maintainers sign up like, hey, I want to have a table that just sprints on this module and I'm willing to accept new people, like, I would probably like to do that. Like, I would like to get into more of that. Because um, I think it would help offload and kind of, I like mentoring through example a bit more and having it on a sprint day would be ideal. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. for people to say, hey, Dave Reed decided that this Friday he's going to be working on XML sitemap, and if you want to help him out, you know, come by the, his, his table and he's decided that, like, somebody with 135 modules might need to pick one or two. Um, unless, I, unless I can clone myself, yeah. <laughs> but it's like the, on Friday I've got some folks who are Human cloning. Know, Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know for myself, like, I've wanted to do more of that. Like, I'm not going to be even at the sprint day t this week because I'm flying home for my family. Um, but, like, if I, if I was to spend the sprint day, like, I've in the past been hesitant to, like, try and help new contributors um, just because, like, we've been thick in the weeds, like, with media stuff. And it's, like, we need people up to speed. But... I think I've been realizing over the last couple of months, like if I actually use the sprint days to help, like, hey, let's get some new people working on this module, and if I can maybe spend the first hour or so figuring out issues that might be good to work on or ways to get them involved, like, we definitely need to have those people onboarded into the process to help. Um, but I think usually once they hit the afternoon session, they're, they're ready to help wherever possible, so that it could be contrib or core. Um, yeah, all right, so back to Drupal.org. Um, um, I would love it if we, there actually is an issue and um, it's been presented before at other Drupal cons, um, an improved Git workflow on Drupal.org. So kind of getting a, away from the, yeah, yeah. Um, away from the patch-based workflow and actually using branches that people can contribute to um, and kind of making patches work for people that want to work with patches but also supporting branches. So if you want to check that out, that would be, I would love that. Um, I'm I'm not certain on that answer. You'd have to probably check the issue. Does Jeremy have an answer if anyone's working on it? Yeah. So it's uh, there is they do have their roadmap that's published on on if you look for the Drupal roadmap that'll tell you what the staff is currently acting in and what's in the queue. Well, and the composer introduces a whole new issue to try and bring people back to GitHub. Composer, I need to GitHub and pull that one. And 
composer is pain. And I would like to thank Jeremy, you and the Drupal CI team, because that has removed pain as a maintainer. So thank you. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what else on Drupal.org? Um, there is this random handbook handbook page for co-maintainer best practices, but it's like really long and really detailed. Um, but like, I would love if we had we could clean up that page a little bit more and make it a little bit more modern expectations, like and have that kind of a point to easily for like, hey, you want to help out with the module? Here's, here's kind of what is the, the community standard for getting involved um, with a module. Um, yeah. Um, better issue queue tools, question mark? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what those are though, so. All right. Um, and I, th I think we did solve the problem with me. It's just we're going to clone myself. Wait for human cloning. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I did want to have one more thing that I wanted to do um, because I promised a module giveaway, and I have been giving them away. Uh, but you should take a moment and look under your seats <laughs> right now. I'm serious. Look under your seats, and if you found an envelope taped underneath your seat, you just won a new module. It's a happy thing, people. It's a happy thing. So on, on, on the sheet is a little slip of paper with the module name and a little secret token that if you post it in the issue queue, uh, I, I guess I have the, the little uh, contest rules. Winners must have a Drupal.org account that is signed the get agree agreement to redeem. To claim your prize entry, file an issue in the project issue queue. For additional entry, send a self-addressed postcard to Dave at Avery.net. Only one person per person. By redeeming you, the prize, you agree to the co-maintainer best practices. Um, so post in the issue queue like with the code um, in the module, and I, I will grant you co-maintainership access. If you want the module itself, you may have it. Um, so this is like my, I have more. I had 58, 48 modules that I was like, I can, I can give these away. Um, so if you want them, you are more than welcome to them. You can, you can trade them. You can barter them at DrupalCon like buttons. Uh, you can trade them for favors with your coworkers. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll give you a lot of respect and a lot of people that will come thank you. Um, and, you know, maybe you can sell them on eBay too. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I'm hoping that, like, I mean, it's silly to do the giveaway, but, like, if, if I can give away 48 modules to people, that's, and one to a person, not 48 to one person, like, it can help spread the load a little bit for everyone else, and, I don't know, take a little load off me, but, yeah, yeah. And uh, I wanted to thank these people. Um, there's Wampy, and uh, Bridger has been helping a lot with the D8 ports uh, at MD Systems. Um, and he's like done a lot of the porting for major modules for me. And that's like, once I've finally had a chance to evaluate those ports and like move them back to Drupal.org, it's been a huge relief like helping with that. So thank you to those people. Um, yeah, and uh, evaluate the session. Let me know feedback on Twitter. Uh, come find me at the Lullabot booth afterwards. Um, if you have more ideas or thoughts on, on how to handle things and, and balance things. Um, so thanks, yeah.